everyone. Thank you for joining us for worship today. We're going to be joined today by um, uh, Michael Murphy and by Jake, our Cub Scout who helped out last spring. For worship today. Oh. And um, so I'm going to ask uh, Michael and Milani make sure you're both muted so that um, we hear just me for the moment, but you will be um, highlighted shortly. Whoops. And I don't know why it's showing Michael. <laughs> it should be me. Let's try this again. There we go. All right. And again, welcome everyone to our worship today. Glad to have you with us on this 21st day of March. This is the live stream worship for Holy Covenant, March 21st, 2021. Good morning, Joni. Thank you for being with us. Um, if you haven't already and you would like to participate in communion, make sure you have some kind of bread or roll or cracker so that you can um, join with us as we do that part of our service, as well as something to drink. Today is the fifth season Sunday of the church season known as Lent. This is a time of preparation and remembrance as we move towards Easter. And this week we'll be focusing on light as simple as a candle that you received in the Lent in a bag package. Um, I also want to thank all of you who made purchases at Anderson's uh, Bookshop for our fundraiser this past week. Uh, we don't have a figure yet as to how much we made, but as soon as we know that, we will let you all know. Again, today we're welcoming Jake Esparza and his family and his Cub Pack leader, Mike. Um, welcome to you all. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, he's going to be receiving his God and Family Award today. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday, and our worship will close with special readings. And our Good Friday service will be via Zoom. That's April 2nd, Friday, April 2nd, via Zoom at 7 p.m. Um, and well, to Facebook Live as we do our worship services. Uh, and Marianne Lazarus will be leading us uh, in a short guided meditation on the last earthly hours of Jesus. On Easter Sunday, April 4th, we'll be celebrating with the special Easter service, and we will be including um, also a sunrise service for those of you who are willing, comfortable, and able to join us at 830. We will meet outside in our garden to um, welcome the sunrise and the risen Christ. That's 830 Easter Sunday, April 4th. We will also have our regular Zoom to Facebook service at 10 o'clock on Easter. So we'll be having to those two services. And I invite you all to join us as you're able for those very special worship celebrations. A uh, couple more announcements. There are still a few things to be done to finish up the details um, of the renovation. Maybe you have a couple of hours or even a full day to share that you can help us with that. Um, that would be greatly appreciated. Please contact Mary Ann. Uh, and so she can schedule you in. Well, we're not meeting in person, our ministries are still con continuing, uh, which include, of course, Share Food, Share Love Food Pantry, um, our book studies, our Thrive with Pride Cafe, Pints with the Pastor, um, and of course, the ongoing expenses of the church, things like utilities and insurance. So we would be grateful for any donations you are able to share with us. Um, you can give via PayPal, via Square, by electronic check or paper check. Um, all those methods are open to you and we are very grateful to those who have shared with us. Um, I am available by a variety of um, methods by Facebook, by Messenger, by email, um, all those are available to you if you get in touch with me. And I am available for 
um, just conversation or if you have a, a concern that you would like or a prayer concern. So let's take a deep breath and settle ourselves and prepare for worship. Let us pray. We are called to celebrate and worship, not just by words spoken, but also by miracles recalled. A baby's first cry, the petals of a rose, mist-covered hills, the restless tides of the seas, human love, human hope. We respond with gratitude, with joy, and with wonder at life's boundless possibilities. Amen. Our reading today is from the wisdom of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. Jesus said to the disciples, you are the light. You don't build a city on a hill and then try to hide it, do you? You don't light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket, do you? No. You set it up on a stand where it gives light to all. So now we come to the recognition of Jake as receiving his God and Family Award. So Holy Covenant as a church seeks to provide opportunities for worship, for study, for service, and for fellowship. Today, we're recognizing someone who has taken the opportunity to fulfill requirements for the God and Family program, and deserves he deserves recognition for that outstanding achievement. And the Bible tells us in the wisdom of Luke chapter 2 that Jesus grew and became strong, was full of wisdom, and God's blessings were upon him. Jake is following Jesus' example in seeking to grow in faith and service to his faith community. Um, many of you will remember Jake was baptized into our community just a couple of years ago, and it's been our joy to welcome him. The program that Jake followed required him to study scripture with me and then design a service project to put into action what he learned. And we discussed how Jesus helped others through feeding them or healing them or comforting them. And he chose to help Holy Covenant with a service project to help beautify our garden area by cleaning out an area that had become overgrown, weed-filled, and very unsightly. Jake and his family came and worked for several days to clear this area, making it much easier for us to replant the area this summer. Therefore, Jake has completed the requirements of study and service for the God and Family Award Program and he's earned the right and the privilege to wear this emblem in recognition of his accomplishment. He'll be wearing the Prey Award, which features a four-colored cross, and the colors converge to make an X at the center of the cross. X is, of course, the first word of the Greek word for Christ and symbolizes Christ at the center of our lives. And the four colors correspond to the four levels of the prey program. Melania, you want to go ahead and, and pin the award on for Jake? All right. Very good. Very proud of you, Jake. That was you did a lot of hard work. And Mike, do you have anything that you want to add? <clears throat> Thank you, Pastor. You're and, you're muted, Mike. Oh. Can you hear me now? No? Well, go ahead and unmute. 
Let's try it again. Can you hear me I now? Hear you. Can't hear you. I'm unmuted. <laughs> Hello. I, we can hear him. Yeah, uh, I can hear you. Go ahead. Can you? Let's see. Hello. Go ahead. Go ahead and try to unmute now. There we go. There we go. Okay. Jake, you can hear, hear me? me. I can hear go you. Ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you, Pastor. We appreciate your cooperation and your uh, time that you've spent with Jake. Uh, one of the points of the uh, Scout Law that a Scout Law uh, lives by is to be reverent. Well, thank you, your uh, relationship with God is a very important thing for a Scout to develop and to grow and to help him become the kind of person that we uh, think that God would like him to be. And Jake has worked very, very hard. He is uh, a tremendous young man. I've had the pleasure of uh, being his cub master. Unfortunately, two weeks ago, we had to kick him out of the nest, and now he's a full-blown Boy Scout. So we'll continue to monitor his progress and be there for him. And we're so happy that he has uh, uh, folks like the congregation, and especially you, Pastor, to uh, nurture him and uh, help him along the way. And we're eternally grateful to you. Thank you very much on behalf of the uh, uh, Scouts BSA program. And uh, thank you for having us. And it's a pleasure to be here today. Well, thank you so much, Mike and Jake, and it's it's been a pleasure to, to work with Jake, and we are just very, very pleased. So, Jake, you're wearing that God and Family album, the yellow emblem. The yellow symbolizes joy and sunshine, and may you experience the joy and blessings of family as you seek to grow in God's love. Let us pray. God giver of wisdom. Christ has called all of us into the adventure of learning and serving. Today we're celebrating one who has answered that call in a very special way. We thank you for and for this moment of celebration and for all that he has done and brought to us at Holy Covenant. Continue to challenge all of us to grow in wisdom and your light so we may bring your realm to earth through our service and love for you. Amen. Congratulations again, Jake, and thank you, Mike and Jake, for being with us today. And it's it's been a joy and a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. So our message today is City Light. The title is City Lights. Will you pray with and for me? Holy one, light world, bless our speaking and our hearing. May your wisdom shine through all we do. Amen. The guiding ideals of the early United States was the idea of a city on a hill. the idea that the U.S. was or would be the example of true democracy uh, for other nations to inspire to the U.S. would be that shining city that was part of the Enlightenment philosophy so, so prevalent um, at that time. Well, it did not always, um, you know, live up. We have not always lived up to that shining city on a hill. Uh, ask anyone whose ancestors were enslaved or woman or doesn't own a lot of property and especially ask this week those who came from another country or whose parents did and who are reviled for it, East Asians, South Asians, Pacific Islanders, Latinx people from just about anywhere oh, or ask indigenous people of the US, Canada, Australia, um, not much equality there either. 
But the ideal persists, the dream, the hope, the goal that every individual will be treated with equal respect and dignity, a right that is conferred on each of us through each of us being equally a child of God. The light of wisdom, of hope, of equality. If we don't uphold it, then we're hiding it under that basket. The whole idea of that light is that it shines for others to see by, to be a guide for people seeking for wisdom, for hope. And that's why you don't cover it up so it can be seen. Otherwise, what's the point of the light in the first place? Individuals, nations, we all have lights. That is, ways that we can beacon for others seeking a clear path to hope. One of our individual tasks is to listen for the prompting of God, of the spirit, to show us how we are to be that light. Are we meant to teach others or to speak fearlessly on behalf of others or to work for more just laws or to create beauty, to help others through our own as Jake did, or to nurture others, or to heal? Is God calling us to lead, to comfort, to grow plants, to grow children, to be a shield for people who are hurting, to point out where there's pain and demand justice, as the prophets did? Whatever it is we are called to do, that is our task until and unless we are called to something else. We ourselves are to be that light, that candle, that city, a guide and a beacon to others. And I speak from personal experience, and I'm sure many of you can attest to this as well, that hiding that light, putting the basket over it, pretending you don't have that life, that gift, that calling, is a sure way to suffocate. When we cannot express our deepest calling, our most certain self, we begin to wither away, whether we know it at the time or not. Are we shining our lights? Think about that this week, this fifth week in Lent. What is it that gives you joy, that lets you forget the world, that draws you into itself and absorbs you to the exclusion of everything going on around you? Is it caring for others? Teaching, cooking, listening to different ways of caring for others. Is it, is it creating through gardening, writing, dancing, music? Or is it through spirituality, praying, studying, listening for God? Before we can talk about putting our gifts to the work that God has intended for us, we have to know what that gift is. Any gift can be used in a number of ways, too. Uh, I know someone who uses her gift for cooking. She could simply have been a good cook, or she could have just had a restaurant. But her restaurant employs people in recovery and people who have recently been released from prison. And the produce for that uh, restaurant, she purchases from urban gardeners. So she is doing justice work and caring for others through her gift of cooking. Writing, for example, can offer a call to justice work, or it can be a place of comfort writing novels and or it can be a means of learning. And by the way, this doesn't have to be your paid work either. Many people have gifts beyond what the world pays them for, and they feel more rewarded for the unpaid work that they do. I'm thinking of food pantry coordinators, uh, tutors for English as a second language, pet therapy trainers, and so on. My point is, Look for your gifts in unexpected places. 
don't assume because you can't or don't get paid for them that the world doesn't want or need your gifts. God-given gifts are vital to the world. That's why God gave them to us. It's not just what you are good at, but what you are called to do. I'm a pretty good cook and gardener, but that's not what I'm called to do. A friend of mine is very good at numbers and administrative sorts of trivia forms and organization, but her calling is her art. This week, think of your gifts and your calling. Contemplate ways your calling can be realized, how your light, that candle, can shine up on that lampstand, not hidden under a basket. Most of all, know that you do have a calling and a gift to be shared with the world in need of it. Light your candle and let it shine. In all God's names, amen. And we come now to the time in our worship for uh, prayers, the prayers of the people, the prayers of the community. If you do have prayer requests, I invite you to write them either in the chat box or in the comment section, depending on whether you're in, on Facebook or in Zoom. And um, we will in, include those in our prayers this morning. Let's see, hello, Holly, I hope you're feeling better. Surgery went well, yay, that's good to know. That's very good to know. Uh, hello, Barbara, it's good to see you with us. <sighs> and Barb and Mayor, and I think I saw Jim in there too. So welcome, it's good to see you all. So let us go now to God. Gracious and loving God, during this season of Lent, as we journey with Jesus to the cross and through the cross, we admit that we are fearful. We are scared, scared to let go, scared to, in, scared to open up. We are scared to open our hearts, our time, our home, and ourselves. And yet, great comforter, we come to you so that we may articulate, share one another's fears and burdens, as we know you always receive ours. Hold us in your healing embrace, everyone who needs you today. Breathe new life and purpose into everyone who is suffering or in pain or wandering in the wilderness, unable to turn to you. Oh, Holy One, there are so many in your tender, loving care in this broken and hurting world. Holy One, we pray for our queer Catholic siblings upon learning the news this week that the Vatican has banned gay union blessings. Holy One, there are no limits or confines to your It's a gift that you share abundantly and freely and wish for us to do the same. We mourn how often humanity and we ourselves fall short of understanding the expansiveness of your love. Give us the courage to celebrate and to stand up for all forms of living and life-giving love and relationships. Parent of us all, you claim each of us a beloved child. Today we repent for how we have fallen short of loving our neighbors as ourselves, in particular how we have fallen short of caring for and protecting our Asian American and Pacific Islander siblings. Let us name how the violent murders in Atlanta, Georgia this week are rooted in racism, white supremacy, misogyny, and stereotyping directed at Asian women. We pray for the eight souls who were murdered, including six Asian women 
and these hate crimes and acts of terror, and we name them now. Payen Grant, Yong Yu, Sun Cha Kim, Soon Park, Chao J Tan, Dao Yu Feng, Delena Yuan, Paul Andrew, Andre Michaels. Holy Spirit, console the grieving families, friends, their communities whose pain and trauma is too often ignored or cast aside. Let us turn toward instead of away from this grief and pain. May we be catalyzed to confront the roots of racism and xenophobia in our midst and even within ourselves. God, show us how our being and well-being are tethered to one another. Holy One, our grief hangs heavy as we pass the one-year mark of Breonna Taylor's killing. Her life was cut short and justice remains elusive. Holy One, you are anywhere and everywhere. We uplift your safekeeping, all of those in need of your protection and comfort this day. We pray for your children in Myanmar. We pray for the citizens of Tunisia and Libya. We pray for those in Mali. May all who are weary and depressed find people and communities around them that are nurturing, strengthening, and freeing. Redeemer, you bless us through the self-giving love of Jesus Christ and through all the ways that Christ's love is embodied. May we proclaim it by teaching and living out our faith that the love of God and neighbor is the heart of the gospel. Coax us out of our fear, compassionate one, so that we may know your radical, amazing grace in all the big and seemingly small moments of each day we live for you, in you. So we lift up our joys as well. We give thanks for love and light and sun and this equinox. We give thanks for all those who helped us find our way in the recent storms. We celebrate the swearing in of Deb Hayland the first Native American and first woman named to the position of Secretary of the U.S. Department of the Interior. We say thank you and amen to all those people and encounters that bring smiles to our faces so that our hearts burst. Help us to remember that sensation, which is your love, O oh God. As the social justice leader, Reverend William Sloan Coffin asked, Courage is a crucial virtue. Will we be scared to death or scared to life? Give us courage for the wilderness and nights ahead. Walk with us this Lenten season as you walked with Christ. And even as we pray for the world, we pray for individuals. For Karen, who is now running, or now recovering, Karen recovering at home. Holly, as she recovers from oral surgery. We lift also the prayers of our hearts. Speak them and know that God hears. And so we gather up these prayers and we offer them to God as we pray, as Jesus taught us. Our creator who art in heaven, hallowed your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And we arrive now at the time for communion, when we gather together around God's table. And in MCC tradition, anyone can celebrate communion, um, having the proper um, training, <laughs> the, 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 um, the knowing how to do it, but it is not confined to the ordained. So each of us now can gather our gifts that we have been given by God of grain and grape and share them virtually. Let us. When you came proclaiming creation, God of wonder, you brought forth what no eye had seen. Snowflakes drifting in a meadow, hawks floating lazily in the sky. You whispered what no ear had heard, whale songs in the deeps, coyote caroling the moon. You established what no heart believed, justice for the most vulnerable, healing for the broken. Day by day, you called us to your side, but when evening fell, we slipped into sin's enticing shadows dashing your dreams for us. You sent the prophets to us, relying on the spirit to give them the right words, but we did not notice as we practiced hubris. So you asked Jesus to come, dashing the hopes of the wicked. He came proclaiming your salvation, God of holiness, your child of salt and light. For those in the shadows of brought light for those whose lives have crumbled around them, rebuilt their hopes, for those who are separated by the chasms of fears, he stretches a bridge so they can meet each other in harmony. For all who face death's uncertainty, he went into that unknown, coming forth to reassure us that its power had been broken. As we seek to see him in our midst, as we try to hear your word of life, we trust in that faith which is mysterious. Christ died, showing us the way to death. Christ was raised, showing us the way to new life. Christ will come to show us the way to your heart. Here at this table of grace, the Holy Spirit proclaims life, transforming these simple gifts. And the people gathered here as we taste the hope in the broken bread. We would go to break the bonds of injustice and free the oppressed. As we are filled with the cup, we would be light to the world, opening our pantry to the hungry, wrapping a naked child in our love. And when God's time is fulfilled and we are gathered together with our siblings in the realm of God, we will not keep anything bottled up, but shout our praises to you, God in community, holy three in one. Amen. On the night before Jesus was executed by the powers that feared his message of love and reconciliation, he gathered with his friends in an upper room, and there they shared a meal of bread and wine. Jesus took it, blessed it in the manner of his people, broke it, and shared it with his friends, saying, This is my body opened for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the meal, Jesus took blessed it too in the manner of his people. He passed it among his friends, saying, drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of my love poured out for you. Do this too in remembrance of me. 
Holy and living God, pour out your spirit on these gifts of grain and grape. Make them be for us whatever we need them to be, that we may be fully your people. My friends, take now these gifts and share in God's feast. And let us pray. Loving God, thank you for the bread and wine in which you have shared yourself with us. May this meal strengthen us as we go about our lives to love and serve you. Amen. Quick repeat of the announcements. Thank you again to all of you who made purchases at Anderson's this week in support of Holy Covenant. Um, we appreciate that, and as soon as we know the amount um, that was uh, the donation from Anderson's, we will let you know. Um, we probably won't hear that until sometime this coming week. Some special services coming up. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday. Our worship will close with special readings. And then Good Friday is April 2nd. Our service will be live streamed at 7 p.m., Marian Lazarus will lead us in a short guided meditation on the last earthly hours of Jesus. Easter Sunday, April 4th, um, we will have not only a special sunrise service at 8.30 at the church in the garden area, we will be masked and distanced. We ask, you know, social distance and be masked. But also at 10 o'clock at our regular service time, we will also have a Zoom, uh, a live streamed worship service. So 8.30 at the church, uh, masked and distance, and then 10 o'clock via Zoom. And I invite everyone to join us for these special, very special worship celebrations as we come to the sort of the climax of the church year with Jesus' death and resurrection. Uh, as a reminder, Sage does via Zoom on Fridays at 1 p.m. And if you'd like to join us, please do contact me for the, uh, for the link. There are still the last few details to be done. The renovation, uh, if you have, whether it's a couple of hours or part of a day free to, that you can help out, would be very greatly appreciated. Contact Mary Ann to see what needs to be done. She'll be there and, and what that whole schedule. And we are grateful. Also, finally, don't forget to make your donations via PayPal, Square, electronic check, and so on. Um, we're thankful for all your gifts. The expenses of the church have not stopped. So let us go now to our closing prayer. May the God you see in all the colors of creation arouse in you a sense of awe and wonder. May the God who is a sacred presence you. May the God who is a source of inspiration and courage keep 